to the weather classroom. Now we know exactly what tropical cyclones are and where they come from. We even know how they happen. Now here comes the tricky part. Just what do you do when they happen? Well, you'll be glad to know that there's a whole bunch of people right here in the U.S. of A. who keep a very watchful eye on the sky and know just what to do when one of these giants begins to stir. Most hurricanes threaten the Atlantic coast of the United States, the Gulf of Mexico, or the Caribbean. So if you studied hurricanes and wanted to be right in the middle of all that action, guess where that would be? South Florida, Hurricane Central. You won't hear about hurricanes without hearing from the folks at the National Hurricane Center. Here, they keep a constant watch on tropical storm activity during hurricane season and issue forecasts, watches, and warnings. And since Brandon was asking, these are the people that give tropical storms their names. During World War II, Army and Navy meteorologists started naming hurricanes after their wives or girlfriends. Equal opportunity knocked in the 1970s when they began using guys' names, too. Around the same time, meteorologists started using a 1 to 5 rating system called the Saffir-Simpson scale to measure a storm's potential damage. When a hurricane causes tremendous destruction or loss of life, its name is retired forever. There will never be another Hurricane Andrew or Camille. But the center relies on other groups here in hurricane country to help them understand these great storms and make better predictions. Well, we try to understand here at the Hurricane Research Division, again, you know, we're part of the Atlantic Oceanographic and Meteorological Lab, is to investigate in all aspects tropical weather and hurricanes in particular. Part of the issue with hurricanes is that we're much more vulnerable, both in the United States and the Caribbean, because there's so many more people living along the coast. The Hurricane Research Division has an annual field program where we utilize three different aircraft to study hurricanes. And two of them, they're called an Orion P-3 aircraft. Uh, we fly right into the center of the hurricane. And we do that because that's really the best way to collect data on where the storm is, how strong it is, and the structure of the hurricane in particular. We also have a variety of satellites that peer down and look at hurricanes and give us a bit more information about where the storms are and the structure of them as well. Before the times of satellites, the only way that a forecaster could know that there was a storm coming was to be if, if a ship happened to run through the storm or pass nearby or if an island was unlucky enough to be struck by the storm. A lot of the storms that we were looking at, a lot of the hurricanes, actually are born way out in a over Africa and actually form off the west coast of Africa. So we're looking for areas of convection, areas where it's, there's some thunderstorms or it's cloudy that persist over time. That tells us that maybe this is a system that's got some potential. And so every year we try to fly into a couple storms intentionally uh, to collect that data. Uh, we also have a, a jet, a Gulfstream 4 jet, that is used to fly around the hurricane to monitor the steering winds that, that, that move the hurricane around. So these three aircraft are really indispensable for, for studying hurricanes. It's this new technology that's pretty exciting to work with that we've come so far to be able to track hurricanes and understand exactly what makes them tick. I mean, hurricanes present a unique challenge. It's, it's something that's very scientifically exciting to understand, but it's also something that has a big societal impact. And if we can provide some guidance to help the forecasters out, do a better job of letting the public know, um, it kind of makes our job feel a little more important and that uh, we feel like we're doing something worthwhile. With all the amazing technology at our disposal, we can keep up with hurricanes from a nice, safe distance. If you wanted more information than that, you'd have to be crazy enough to get in a plane and fly right into the middle of the storm. Well, that is exactly what a very famous group of people do. The Hurricane Hunters are the 53rd Weather Reconnaissance Squadron. It's an Air Force Reserve unit based in uh, Keesler Air Force Base, Mississippi. Our most well-known mission is that of tracking tropical cyclones, which is why we're called the Hurricane Hunters. But we also do uh, gather weather data during the wintertime. We've been around since 1944, towards the end of World War II. But actually, we trace our heritage back to a dare that occurred at a training base in Texas. Some of the student pilots were making fun of the airplane that was picked to train them, an instrument flying. 
which was a T6 Texan, and the instructor decided to take it out into a hurricane to prove its weatherworthiness. And that was where Hurricane Hunting was born. But these pilots had dared him to go out there, said this plane can't stand up to a hurricane, and it did. And that proved that we could intentionally fly into a hurricane, and since then that's been our job. Hurricane season runs officially from June 1 through November 30th, uh, but we all know the peak of the season falls right around September 10th. So August, September, and October are very busy for us because that's when there's more actual tropical activity. Um, our area of responsibility is the Atlantic. We cover the Atlantic, the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, and we even do the Eastern Pacific. Um, we don't start flying a storm until it crosses 55 degrees west longitude and uh, basically we're on call for the forecasters at the Tropical Prediction Center. They, um, they're monitoring all of this information on satellite and when they feel they need um, uh, more specific, more detailed information, they request that we go out and fly the missions. The main job of Hurricane Hunters is to go out and find the position, the exact position of the hurricane and also uh, the strength of it and map out the extent of the damaging winds on all four sides. This information goes directly to the National Hurricane Center in Miami, Florida, and they feed that to their computers to find out uh, how strong it is right now so they can forecast what it'll be doing in the future. Our information makes the forecast about 25% more accurate than just looking at satellite data alone. This is a drop wind sawn, and this is the primary way we measure how strong a hurricane is. Uh, we have a whole case of these on, inside the aircraft, and as we fly into the hurricane, and actually into the hurricane's eye, uh, we'll go ahead and load one of these into a tube in the floor and it goes right through the bottom of the aircraft. It's a big spring-loaded tube and we really shoot this out of the bottom of the plane at high speed. So as it exits the plane, it'll go ahead and rip off this cover and a parachute will come out, a drogue chute. And as it falls, it keeps the, uh, the sawn steady. It really stabilizes the sawn. It's already in a hurricane, so it's going to get bounced around quite a bit. So as it falls, it measures your wind speed, your direction, uh, your temperature, and your pressure in the eye of a hurricane. It's a lot safer than most people think. You know, they think this is an extremely dangerous mission. However, we train very hard to minimize those risks. Um, my, my first flight uh, myself that I flew was back in 95, was Hurricane Hortense. And that was the only hurricane uh, that I've ever flown with a very experienced crew. I was the youngest guy in the crew. Uh, and they, we actually had to turn back. The storm was just too intense. We couldn't fly into the eye. We couldn't find a, a hole through the clouds to fly into the eye of the hurricane and we actually had to turn back for three hours and let the storm actually die down a little bit until we could come back and actually penetrate the eye and fly into it and uh, that being my first hurricane that was really a, an intense experience and you, you just really respect uh, the weather uh, as big as these planes are and as strong as they are and as much as you train you just, it's always going to be it's always unexpected you never know what's going to happen so uh, you just have to have a lot of respect for what you're doing. Don't go away. The Weather Classroom will be right back.